Okay. Hello kids. Today we're going to talk about the history of the periodic table. So how we got to this massive thing that you're so used to seeing in chemistry class. All right. So let's take a look at that massive periodic table right there. So um, this is a colorful version of what it looks like and there's a little bit cut off at the bottom, but don't worry about that for now. Uh, so lots and lots of stuff going on here, but it didn't always look like this. We didn't discover all of these at the exact same time and magically knew how to organize it. Right. So we started with a, a one main person followed by someone else. We're going to talk about two people, even though there's a lot more than two people that actually had something to do with this. So the first person we're going to talk about is who? So his name was Mendeleev. And he took all the information that had already been discovered and he organized the periodic table uh, by increasing atomic mass. So okay. he thought mass was the best way to organize it. Now the groups or the rows that you can see in this one, he organized by similar properties. So, um, so elements that uh, were, that had the same reactivity he put together. So he put the families by reactivity and then everything else by atomic mass. Right, and so uh, just just to be clear, so everything that was, you know, and these guys right here were all similar properties, and then as we move across, see across this line right here, that was increasing mass. So Li, lithium had a mass of seven, beryllium 9.4, boron, carbon. So those are all the mass numbers right there. Right. So increasing mass, similar properties. Um, but then something happened to uh, that something was discovered that actually made this a bad idea. So, so you've already learned about isotopes. And isotopes, remember, are the same element, but they have different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. So we can't organize the periodic table by mass. Multiple elements would need lots of different spaces. Remember, right. oxygen is three isotopes. It would need three boxes on the periodic table. So imagine right. how big that would be. Yeah, it would be really, really big. And, and so we know that there's an average atomic mass now on the periodic table, but we had to have a different way to organize it. We can't do it by mass anymore. Right. And there's so, only one, one subatomic particle that never changes for any element. Right. Uh, the number of protons does not change for any element. So, uh, and we call that atomic number. Uh, atomic number. So the... This is the next periodic table. This was devised by a guy named Henry Moseley. Henry Moseley. Sound it out, baby. Okay, so um, he decided, okay, well, with this discovery of isotopes, he's like, we can't order it by mass. Uh, he liked the fact that the up and down groups or families were organized by similar chemical and physical properties. Yeah, he kept he that. He kept that, no problem, but what he did for the rows, if you notice here, we've got helium, lithium, beryllium, they're all increasing by one. Helium two, lithium three, beryllium four. That's the number of protons. Right, and that's the atomic number. So, so uh, he put them in order of uh, increasing atomic number. And that's the only property that doesn't change for any element. Correct. So that was the best way to organize it. Yeah, so if you go from four protons to five protons, then you've gone from beryllium to boron. Right. No problem there. So that was Mosley's uh, contribution there. And basically then we end up back at this table right here. There's a lot of stuff that happened between Mosley and this table, uh, but that's not something you really have to worry about at this point. So what's really cool is every time they discover a new element, it still fits into this pattern. Right. And so we just keep discovering them and we keep fitting them into this pattern. So it seems like a good idea. Yep.